Today we're going to cover the routing and meter tabs at the top right of the main window in X32 Edit. This is the main window, which is the mixer window. It kind of has an overview of all the channels of the mixer, trying to show you everything that's in those channels. And the routing, meter and monitor tabs are just up at the right. There's the meter tab. And if you click on that, it'll take you to this meter display, which we've clicked on the channel tab at the top of that. And it just shows you the input channels. So all the input channels, 1 to 16 on the X32 rack, and 17 to 32 are virtual channels on the X32 rack. They're not real channels because there are only 16 inputs on the back of the X32 rack. In this screen grab, you can see that the gates on channels 16, 18 and 19 are reducing the gain by about 20 dB. I'd say that 18 and 19 are just under 20 dB and 16 is just over 20 dB. Only channel 16 shows any gain reduction from the dynamic processor, which is less than 3 dB at the moment. So it's not a huge amount in terms of gain reduction that it's using. Wire channels 20, 21, 23, 25, 26, 27 red? Well, they have been muted. That's why. This is the mix bus tab at the top of the meter tab. So the mix bus if we click on this instead of the channel tab, the mix bus tab, why are mix bus 9 and 10 red? Because they're muted on the bus matrix tab. So they're muted as channels. As you can see, there is audio going to 11 of the 16 buses, um, not 3, 4, 13, 15 and 16. Uh, audio is going out of the matrix buses and the left and right main audio bus just going to the buses it's not going to the outputs necessarily looking at the dynamic gain reduction we can see some gain reduction is happening on channels 1 and 2 it's almost reducing the gain by about 15 db some is happening on the left and right output bus it's reducing it by about 2 db or something like that slightly over 2 db why are mix buses 9 and 10 red? Well, you know why they're red. They're red because they're muted. The mix buses are muted on the bus matrix tab. If we go to the aux and effects tab at the top of the meters window, we can see that aux returns 1 to 6 are muted and stereo FX return 4 is also muted because they're red. There is some signal on the outputs of the auxiliary sends. The reason there is signal on the outputs of the auxiliary sends is they are the six outputs on the back of the X32 rack. One, two, three, four, five, six, but five and six are echoed on phonos, so unbalanced outputs. But the rest of them are balanced jacks. So there are six balanced jack outputs on the back of the X32 rack and I'm using them for headphones. So I'm going to feed the vocals from 1 and 2, the drummer from 3 and 4 and the bass player from 5 and 6. If we go to the meter tab in and out, that shows all the inputs and all the outputs of the X32 rack on one screen. Inputs 1 to 16 shows you what's been plugged in to the back of the mixer. Inputs 17 to 32 show you what's playing back via the USB card because I've set up inputs 17 to 32 in the routing tab to have the USB card 1 to 16 on the inputs 17 to 32 for the X32 rack. So we can see that there's something coming out of the aux sends. There's nothing going into the aux returns because I haven't plugged anything in there yet. You could plug a CD player in there if you wanted to. The only difference between the aux return inputs and the balanced 
XLR inputs at the back of the X32 rack are the fact that the AUX inputs don't have any phantom power. So you can't turn on phantom power for them. Plugging a line level signal in there will be fine. So a CD player or a sampler or a synthesizer, anything at line level should be okay. On the X32 rack there are 8 XLR outputs but 7 and 8 are always specified to take the main left and the main right outputs. So if we go to the routing tab, which is on the top right of the main screen that we were looking at for the X32 rack. So the main screen, if we go to the top right, you can choose the routing tab. And the routing tab refers to how things have been routed within the X32 rack. So here, the source is along the top and the destination is down the left. And I've specified that the source, 1 to 16, the local source, which is the local inputs on the back of this, are set to go to channels 1 to 16. So the local sources will go to channels 1 to 16. I've also specified on this that the USB cards inputs 1 to 16 will appear on channel 1732 as I described before. The grey selections will only become active when using the mixer in play mode rather than record mode and I'm always going to be in record mode so I'm not going to use it in play mode. The AES 50 A and B on the back of the X32 rack they can handle a lot of signals and there's 96 signals between both of them, 48 each. I'm not using them at the moment, so I haven't bothered to route anything to them. In the screen grab though, outputs 1 to 16, they remember the sources are along the top, the destinations are down the left. Channels 1 to 16 are routed to AES 50, A and B 1 to 32. And Ultranet signals 1 to 16 are routed to AES 50, A and B, channels 33 to 48. The X32 rack came with the 32 channel USB audio interface card pre-installed into the expansion slot when I received it. In the screen grab you can see that I've routed local channels 1 to 16, the local channels 1 to 16, to the card inputs 1 to 16. So I've taken the source and I've set it to outputs 1 to 16. And then I've set the card outputs 1 to 16 to the card inputs 17 to 32, which doesn't make much sense really. I'm not really using the card in this direction to send things to the computer from the X32 rack. So it doesn't make much difference yet, but it will probably make some difference later on. On the X32 rack, on this one, I've set it up to send mix buses 9 to 14 to the XLR outputs on the back of the rack. So 9 to 14, 9 is output 1, 10 is output 2, 11 is output 3, 12 is output 4, 13 is output 5, 14 is output 6, and output 7 and output 8 feed the left and right PA speakers. You can also see that I've told the mixer to route the direct outputs of the four effect units to the virtual channels 9 to 16. On the output delay tab, you can delay each of them by a certain amount. Don't forget to turn on the delta T at the top. Here I've done it for output 3. You have to turn on the delta T or you won't hear anything happening at the output. Here you can define 
what will be sent out of the physical aux outputs on the back of the X32 rack. Now I've set it up so that Mixbus 1 and 2 feeds vocals left and right. Mixbus 3 and 4 feeds drums left and right and these are all set for the headphones as I've said. So I'm going to use these to feed all headphone mixes, IEMs and ear monitors. So in the screen grab you can see that I've sent mix buses 1 to 6 to aux outputs 1 to 6. So that's the auxiliary outputs on the back of the desk. But I've also sent the main left right buses to the AES EBU left and right outputs. They're digital outputs. I'm probably not going to use them. On the Ultranet, the Ultranet is really where you plug in the P16s if you have them. But we haven't invested in these, so we're not going to talk about the P16s.